Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel Biodiversity and Conservation. I am Subhalakshmi Raut from Ambika Prashad Research Foundation, Odisha, India. And uh, today we are going to know about uh, cell signaling and uh, some basics about it. So let's start. So what is cell signaling? We know that a cell needs to communicate with its environment so that it can uh, make appropriate responses in terms of the basic cellular activities like development, tissue repair, immunity, as well as uh, normal cell homeostasis and coordinate, coordinates uh, different uh, cellular actions. So, cell signaling um, has been the most extensively studied uh, um, part in contest of human diseases and uh, signaling between the cells of a single organism is uh, uh, very interesting. However, cell signaling may also occur between the cells of two different organisms also and uh, we will know about this and more in developmental biology and uh, cell signaling basically is the process by which uh, a cell interacts with itself other cells and the environment and it is a fundamental property of all cellular life in uh, in prokaryotes and eukaryotes and uh, how a cell signaling actually occurs uh, there must be some signaling molecule there must be a receptor which will uh, receive the signaling molecule then after receiving they uh, will conduct some um, signal transduction process then there will we will get a response which is uh, the product or after effect which helps in our daily life processes so here the ligand is the signaling molecule there may be a hormone or a growth factor or polypeptide or cytokine etc and uh, the signaling molecules are released by signal producing cells they reach and transfer biological signals to their target cells to initiate uh, specific cellular responses uh, the conditions on which signaling mainly depends is the uh, activation of receptor by the lichen uh, actually uh, a receptor on the cell surface or inside uh, the cell um, maybe in the nucleus or in the extra in the uh, cytosol uh, the receptors are always inactive so after binding with the lichen they become active um, or get phosphorylated uh, causing some changes in the target cell uh, which then generates a response uh, so now here are the stages of uh, cell signaling so there are mainly three stages uh, in cell uh, signaling that is uh, signal reception signal transduction and response so here you can see when the signal molecule uh, binds to a receptor protein uh, then uh, there is um, normally um, embedded in the plasma membrane of the target cell the process is called reception because the receptor receives the signal molecule um, with it uh, from the extracellular fluid and uh, after the reception the rece receptor activates one or more intracellular uh, signaling pathways uh, involving a series of uh, signaling proteins that process is called signal transduction transduction means uh, passage of information through two or more proteins signaling proteins and uh, the last step is response where one or more of the intracellular signaling proteins alter the activity of the effector proteins 
effector proteins uh, and thereby the behavior of the cell effector proteins are those uh, proteins on which uh, the signal gets uh, targeted means they are uh, uh, the proteins of the targeted cell which will give us a response that uh, that may be metabolic or that um, um, effector protein may be uh, transcription regulatory protein or a cytoskeletal protein so if it's a metabolic enzyme then it will alter in the metabolic pathway uh, and if it uh, the effector protein is a transcription regulatory protein then it will alter the gene expression and it if uh, the effector protein is a cytoskeletal protein then it will alter the cell shape or movement so on the basis of uh, which pathway or which um, effector protein is involved we will get the particular type of response so uh, now we will discuss about uh, some types of cell signaling and uh, uh, we came to know about cell signaling and what uh, is the process through which cell signaling is uh, done and what are the types how cell signaling uh, can be different from one another so mainly we will study five uh, types of cell signaling there is autocrine paracrine endocrine uh, juxtacrine and uh, synaptic signaling so let's go through one by one uh, first one is uh, juxtacrine um, signaling here uh, the juxtacrine signaling means the interaction by membrane contact actually uh, it is a contact dependent uh, signaling many extracellular signal molecules remain bound to the surface of the si signaling cell and influence only cells that comes in contact with it so uh, this type of signaling require uh, physical contact between the cells and um, it is important uh, during um, development and in immune responses also uh, this type of signaling has been observed uh, for some growth factors cytokine and chemokine cellular signals uh, as these all play an uh, important role in immune response and um, this type of signaling is also present between neuro neuronal uh, cell bodies and uh, motile processes of microglia both during development and in adult brain and uh, the example of juxtacrine signaling one example is uh, notch delta signaling and here you can see that the ligand cell has uh, the um, processes which are present uh, embedded in the cell and um, these uh, these uh, processes uh, get attached to the receptor cell and uh, after direct contact the signaling carries out and we get the response next one is paracrine signaling in most cases signaling cells secrete uh, signal molecules into the extracellular fluid uh, often the sec uh, secreted molecules are local mediators which act uh, only on cells in the local environment of the signaling cell usually the signaling and target cells are of different cell types and the receptors available on the cell membrane to receive the signals are um, are very competent and um, in this type of signaling uh, the cell produces uh, signal to induce changes in the nearby cells altering the behavior of the uh, those cells and uh, they actually act in uh, uh, short distance only so called as uh, local action and um, 
the cells that produce uh, paracrine factor secrete them into immediate extracellular fluid or environment and uh, the factors then travel into nearby cells in which the gradient of factor uh, received determines the out uh, outcome um, the distance uh, here plays the major role and um, some examples are wnt signaling hedgehog signaling fgf tgf beta signaling etc super tgf beta super family uh, these are the examples of paracrine signaling next one is autocrine signaling uh, the autocrine signaling uh, involves a cell secreting a hormone or chemical messenger that binds to the autocrine receptor on that same cell leading to changes in the cell itself and um, it, um, examples are mainly cancer cells they often produce extracellular signals that stimulate their own survival and proliferation um, there are also cytokine interleukin 1 in monocytes uh, when interleukin 1 is produced in response to external stimuli it can bind to cell surface receptors on the same cell that produced it and uh, there are also activated t lymphocytes uh, they respond to antigenic stimulation by synthesizing a growth factor that drives their own proliferation and thereby increasing the number of responsive T lymphocytes. Next is endocrine signaling. Uh, the, these are the signaling over long distances and it makes use of the endocrine cells which secrete their signal molecules the called hormones directly into the blood stream and the blood carries the molecules far and wide allowing them to act on target cells that may lie anywhere in the body and the signaling molecule act on target cells distantly located from the site of synthesis and the examples are testosterone progesterone gonadotrophins the uh, releases of adrenal, adrenal glands and insulin also from pancreas and the specificity of signaling can be controlled if only some cells can respond to a particular hormone and the last one is uh, synaptic signaling uh, it is a unique type of paracrine signaling uh, in which the nerve cells uh, transmit signals and um, there is a presence of synapse uh, between the cell originating and the cell receiving the signal uh, it is performed by neurons that transmit signals electrically along their axons and release uh, neurotransmitters at synapses which are often located far away from the neuron, neuronal cell body uh, and the tightly organized structure of the synapse ensures that the neurotransmitter is delivered specifically to receptors on the postsynaptic tra target cells and um, this is the common process of uh, signal transduction in neurons and uh, it is a type of uh, cell signaling thank you this is all from me today